Welcome to another episode of the Bulldog Sports Update. I'm Harrison Watt. They will talk about Ferris State hockey, wrap up their season, as well as Ferris State football and spring practice. But first, let's get to Ferris State men's basketball. I'm joined today by guests of the Bulldog Sports Network, John Smith. John, thanks for joining me. Glad to be here. Glad to be filling in for friends and uh, having a chance to talk about such a great team. Yeah, speaking of filling in with friend, for friends, everybody seems to be out on the road in South Dakota right now. Getting ready for the Elite Eight. This is a basketball team that off to a 35-1 and start, 23 straight wins. They went 22-0 and here at home at Wink Arena. And what a season it's been so far. It's amazing that they swept the season at home, taking every game that they hosted and then took care of the Great Lakes Conference Tournament and followed it with a regional sweep of uh, three good teams. Three really good teams. And when we go to the regional here, Bulldogs got to host it at home, and uh, we got some good crowds here at Wink Arena as we get ready to take a look here at the highlights from the regional championship against the Finley Oilers. And uh, man, that was a, it was a great environment, but more importantly, a great win for the Bulldogs. Yeah, you had to show up early to get your seat. I stuck myself up in a corner, and I'm looking forward to seeing all of this again because uh, Ferris took a team that took him to, in November, the last second to get a win, and then uh, really got a dominant effort from a lot of different guys. Yeah, John, you were on the call in that game back in November, and it was an exciting one. So you knew this was going to be a tight game, and uh, even into the second half, Finley uh, had a lead at one point. What I didn't expect was them to be able to control uh, Martise Kimbrough of Findlay so well. Martise is laying a screen right there, a uh, little guard that uh, didn't have such a great day, 2 of 13 in the game against Ferris, but Terrence Sullivan, a real solid player for them as well. Regardless, you've got guys like Hankins who can just dominate inside, Noah King did not have his best day, but at least we got a piece of him hitting a shot. It's the balance of this team and the character and the experience that's just got them to where they are on a level field playing in uh, their second national quarterfinal in the last 30 years. Deshaun Thrower had himself a good game. We saw a bucket from him. Finley making a couple of tough shots to make it tight here towards halftime. Bulldogs going to get... Uh, a couple of good shots here. They made good shots in the first half, Ferris State, and able to take a good nine-point lead into the locker room against the Finley team. Got to imagine they feel good about that. In that highlight right there, you're seeing uh, Tyquan Greer try to get uh, Zach Hankins' attention. He's an afterthought in a way. There you see Marquise Mayfield. So many guys they can turn to for things, and everybody contributes, and there doesn't seem to be a lot of ego about who scores when or how much. Tournament regional MVP was Drew Cushingberry, who made uh, you know, he's good at making a lot of tough shots, good defensively, just a real steady point guard. Here we get into the mid part of the second half, and the Bulldogs uh, having some issues here with uh, Finley making some shots and making it close. I couldn't remember Tommy Schmock's name when I was calling the game in uh, November. He did what he could. They were a man down, and that happens this time of year. People get hurt. But Deshaun Thrower didn't hurt himself by uh, only playing 19 minutes and scoring 20 points. Tycho and Grew with a big shot right here after the shot fake. Bulldogs starting to pull away here, and then this place uh, roof kind of came off a little bit to Sean Thrower. Well, it's amazing, and in the stands we were saying, why wouldn't you play Thrower down the stretch? The question is, why would I question a coach in Andy Bronkema who's gone 63-6 and six the last two years? I mean, the guy's got a handle on what's going on and uh, certainly has a lot of people to turn to, and uh, Thrower just toweled up and got ready for the trip to San, uh, South Dakota with everybody else. As we talk about depth in this basketball team, you look back through the year and you, you look at the box scores and you rarely see anybody going over 22, 23 points for the most part because so many guys can get on the score sheet when some of the starters have a bad day. There are probably four or five guys off the bench that can uh, piece together a good enough day to get a win. And uh, how valuable is that this time of the year when you have that kind of depth? It's great to see things work. Uh, Marquise Mayfield is the type of forward that will press the ball up the floor. He'll rebound it, and I call it Gordy Howe. You're the hockey guy, but he'll take it end to end. He'll run down the floor with the ball and uh, try and set up a play, if not take the ball to the hole himself. And that's just part of what's going on. Uh, Noah King, seven-point scorer a couple of years in the middle of his career, moves it up to 12 points and hits game-winning shots all over the place. Just amazing that uh, they can turn to so many guys, and they'll have to keep turning to them if they can make this full week successful. To refer back to our stats on the season here, 35-1. and one, They were 19-1 and one in conference. They've won 23 games in a row. 22-0 and at home, and I think just as impressively, 10-1 and one on the road. It's not easy to win the GLIAC. It's not easy to win home or road, but to go 10-1 and one 
on the road. That's a pretty big deal for this Bulldog team. The only stumble they were able to solve it twice over by uh, beating Lake Superior State here in the regular season and then knocking them out in the conference and then actually a third time knocking them out again in the regional, the NCAA regional. Kem J. Williams, another great little guard, but when you got guys six foot three in Furlick and Cushingberry who are regular defenders, Pete was an all-conference defender, They've got all kinds of talent they can lay on people to uh, make their way, and now they're going to just face an international squad in Barrie and a lot of uh, top-flight guys down the stretch here as they play at the uh, Sanford Pentagon in Sioux Falls during the Elite Eight. Speaking of the Elite Eight, taking a look here at the Elite Eight bracket here as they get into the national quarterfinal, Bulldogs take on Barrie, the number one seeded Bulldogs in the Elite Eight take on Barrie, and uh, when you look at this, when you look at this Elite Eight bracket, you recognize the fact that all these teams have certainly earned the right to be here because the regional structure is a really tough structure to find your way into this final eight. Last time Ferris made it this far was the first year I followed the team in 1987-88. And they were appointed at that time to the Springfield Civic Center if they had made the final four, and that's in Massachusetts. But to get there, they had to go out to Anchorage, Alaska. And when they got out there, there was some sort of a home show, something in the venue. So they went to a middle school gym to play this thing out. So Ferris, uh, you know, had a stacked hand against them that day. Here they're the top seed, and it's everybody at the Pentagon trying to uh, make their case. They're up against a great team in Barrie, a team with a lot of international flair, some scorers, and uh, they're just going to do what they do. It'll be excellent to watch or listen to. Andy Brockman, a guy that's had, uh, of course, a lot of success this year with this program. What have you seen from him? I know you've been around and seen a lot of other basketball coaches here. I don't want to date you too much. No, but I don't. <laughs> that's a bother, it doesn't bother me a bit. I can't, I can't change fate and uh, the experience of knowing all these different guys. And Andy is very grounded. I mean, just understands what he wants to do and understands what he wants to try and impart to the officials during the game, but he doesn't blow up. It's a level head and just... The results speak for themselves. Uh, 28 and 5, Ferris had never put up a record that good, uh, that many wins in a season, and they top it by seven this year. Seven. And now they've got the chance to put up as many as 38 wins if they sweep through the week. 38 wins would be quite quite an accomplishment to finish this season 38 and 1 with a national championship. Uh, game will be played Tuesday. This game is being taped. Uh, or this uh, show is being taped rather just before this game played. So uh, we'll get you the results as soon as we can. Visit FerrisStateBulldogs.com for more information. John, thanks so much for joining me again today. Excellent. We're looking forward to anybody else telling you how great things were out in Sioux Falls during the course of the week, Harrison. Good to be with you. Well, thanks, John. When we come back, we will talk to Ferris State football as they get set in spring practices.